All right, this is part two in a series of videos on holistic education. Here I am trying to differentiate between humanistic learning theory and holistic learning theory. And they do share many similar elements. And we try to put things in boxes. They're either this or either that. And that you have absolute definite categories is not as important as just understanding the bigger picture. Both of these theories see human beings as essentially good and naturally and evolving. We naturally want to evolve, to grow physically, socially, emotionally, psychologically, cognitively, even spiritually to our highest state. If we don't, it is something that has gotten in the way. If we don't naturally want to learn and grow to our highest state, something has gotten in the way. Learning is enhanced, according to both of these theories, when we align our instructional procedures, our curriculum, with this natural human desire or instinct or propensity to grow. When we align with humans' natural tendencies, when we align our instruction with how children naturally want to learn and grow and do. For example, young children learn by playing. So wouldn't it make sense that we include play as an instructional endeavor? Middle school children, social interaction is right where they're at. So wouldn't it make sense if we include cooperative learning groups where they're able to work in groups? The purpose of education then from both a humanistic and a holistic point of view is to help develop better human beings. Human beings who are better able to develop self, others, the environment, and the community. Now, education is a very human endeavor. We should focus on that aspect of being human. We should also look at those aspects that are dehumanizing. What parts of education are dehumanizing, both to the student and to the teacher? Let me give you one uh, hint of one example. That might be the uh, standardized tests that treat children like so much cattle and numbers and assigns them numbers and describes them in terms of how far they are away from average. Don't get me going. Holistic education, then, involves a lot of different things, as I said in a previous video. It's not one thing like behaviorism and cognitive psychology, but it could involve some or all of these. Whole to part learning, and we're going to look at that first. Dimensions of spirituality, transcendence. Some people focus on the social justice and community part when they assign themselves a spot in holistic edge. Ontology, that means the nature of reality. Quantum physics, okay, that is everything is connected. Some people focus on that. Perennial philosophy, a common spiritual wisdom found in all traditions back through time. And the self, capital self, is that part of the psyche that knows all. Different people, different parts of holistic education focus on some or all of these. It is not one thing, and it's not easily defined. That is both the joy and the sometimes the challenge of being a holistic educator. Holistic education, a brief comparison. Humanistic education versus holistic education. Humanistic more or less says that it tries to align the curriculum education with those natural human desires. Holistic education is different from humanistic education in that it includes these parts you see on the screen before you. All right, this is the end of part two. The next one will be part three, where we'll look at the whole to part versus fragmentation.